I'm Victoria Beckham and I am the creative director of my own brand, Victoria Beckham. Hi, I'm Edward Enfield. Welcome to this Vogue Visionary Session where we'll be talking about what inspires us, the route it took to get here in the fashion industry, and we'll be giving you lots of advice on how to succeed in your industry. First question I have for you is, what's your earliest fashion memory? My earliest fashion memory would be when I was very, very young and I used to watch my mum getting ready. My mum used to really take a lot of pride in the way she dressed and it was more, more, more of everything. Old bigger school. shoulder pads, bigger hair. Old school, yeah. Exactly. It was a time when she was wearing Christian Dior Poison, the perfume, which was such a heavy fragrance and it was a lot, but it was inspiring. I was very young and I just used to look up to her and dream of the day that I could wear the fragrance and the makeup and the clothes. Who made the styling decisions in the Spice Girl? I am not taking responsibility for those big <laughs> Spice Girl shoes. And I'd say to the girls, I did used to take up the budget. You took all the budget? <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Because <sighs> their shoes were from that shop. Do you remember Buffalo? Yeah. And like Carnaby Street. I remember the big birds. Yeah, and they just used to get them all for free. And you were in Tom Ford. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> what are some of your favourite fashion moments from that time? There were times when we were so tired that the more tired we were because of all the travel, the more makeup we wore and the bigger the hair got and the shorter the skirts and the higher the heels, you know, we would just overcompensate. So I don't know if that was um, one of my fondest memories or if it was myself and David turning up to a Versace event in matching Gucci leather. <laughs> Wearing the wrong stuff, Designer. but you know, owning it. Yeah, you have to. Have you ever attempted to look back at those moments on YouTube? Listen, everybody wants to show me them and everybody wants to know what I think of them. Back then, I didn't know. I didn't know any better. I didn't know the fashion industry. And so there was something so sweet and naive, naive about the fact I didn't care. I just expressed myself in that way. That's what's so great about YouTube. Anything that you want to watch, it is so easy to find. It's the most incredible archive, right? Yeah. So Edward, who are the first people that got you into fashion? Oh my God, well, that's, that's easy. The stylist Simon Foxton, who discovered me on a train when I was 16 to model. The photographer Nick Knight, who introduced me to ID Magazine. Terry and Trisha Jones, who owned ID Magazine at the time. And a little bit later, Franca Sanzani from Italian Vogue. Can you recall some of your earliest looks from when you used to model? And are there any of those pieces that you still wish you owned now? One of my favorites was a tweed suit with sort of short plus fours, as they call them. I wish I kept those. I think they were by Christopher Nemeth. From a Christopher from way back God. when. So no, I didn't keep anything from those days. Um, I wouldn't fit them anyway. Are there any looks from then that you regret? a tight black muscle top, a red leather necklace, blue cycling shorts. I couldn't get away with it now. <laughs> <laughs> when did fashion design occur to you as a possible career? Do you know it was always something that I wanted to do? It was always a passion of mine just because I, what I desired, I couldn't find out there. Um, and so it wasn't until quite a long time after I finished with the Spice Girls that it was a real possibility, but it was always a dream and a passion. What are the first steps you made to make it happen? Well, I was friends with Roland Murray. At the time, we were managed by the same person. And Roland mentored me. You know, he was never involved on the, with the design side of things, but he introduced me to a team of people that could support me. Um, and so he really was... The reason why I'm here now, he was so kind and generous with his time and his advice. So it was Roland really that, 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 that gave me the tools to turn a dream into a reality. Edward, when did you realise that this was going to be your career? I remember stepping on my first photo shoot as a model with Simon Foxton and he dressed me and I went out and I saw the photographers, I saw the other models, I saw the sets, and I swear in that moment, I knew this was going to be my world. I didn't know in what capacity, 
but I knew that was it. What's been some of your biggest learning curves as a businesswoman? You know, I used to think if the product is good, then that is enough to be successful. And what I realize is that there's a, there's a, there's a big machine that, you know, there's a lot of people, a big team that, that, that have to all be in place to, to make it a success. It's not just about the product. You know, it's about the team. It's yes. about the finance team. It's about the logistics team. You know, there's quite a lot of unsexy, shall we say, roles that are so <laughs> yeah. important to make something a success. So what would you tell a young designer starting out? I would tell a young designer to work for another brand. You know, learn, keep your eyes learn. open, keep your ears open and just learn while somebody else is, you know, is paying the bills, if you like. You know, it's a big responsibility to have your own brand and to just learn from other people in the industry and be a sponge, yeah. get inspired and just learn, learn, learn. Technology and the internet has changed everything in fashion. How do you use platforms like YouTube to connect with your customers? You know, I love the fact that I can get directly to my customer and my community so very, very quickly. I can have fun as well, I can show personality. I'm checking that the children are all out of bed. I feel like I'm going crazy. Someone just asked me if this was a hash plant on my t-shirt. I said, it's a flower. As if it would be. And the fact that we don't rely so much now on the media to, to tell the story. Um, we can tell it ourselves through the internet, which I think is very powerful. I can live stream my, my fashion shows. Um, I can use YouTube for beauty tutorials, you know, where I can collaborate with other artists. So it's very, very important and it's very accessible for my customer. YouTube's given us more reach. You know, before the reader had to go to the newsstand to sort of pick up the magazine and now they can connect with the magazine online. It's all about community. So Edward, what role can Vogue play in promoting sustainability? We promote sustainability every day. My motto really is buy better, buy less. And when I say buy better, I don't mean just expensive, just buy things that last, that you can pass on to Harper, that you can pass on to new generations. You know, that one piece that will last you. So I really believe in that. Buy better, buy less. That's what we say at Vogue. Buy one Victoria Beckham coat. It's gonna last. It's gonna last. Buy better, it's gonna last. I like That's that. It. Victoria, you've achieved so much in your career. What's left? I have so much ambition, so much drive. I'm just scratching the surface, not just with fashion, but with beauty as well. So I dream very, very big. I work hard. And I believe the sky's the limit. You know, I believe in creative visualization and there is so much more I want to do. Edward, you have just published your fantastic memoir and completed five years at British Vogue. What is next for you? I mean, I really love what I'm doing right now. I love working at British Vogue. I love working with the European Vogues and all these incredible young editors we have in Spain, Germany, Italy and France. And every day I learn something new. And so long as there's still creativity in what I do, I'll, I'll be here. I think what you should do next is learn the languages of all those Vogues. Different countries. I'm going to tell you what Ed was going to do next. He's going to learn to speak <laughs> Spanish, French, oh, German. Italian. Italian. That's what I'm going to do. In your spare time. That's when what you're I'm not writing like, books like I or have, editing. Oh, I have so much time now. I'm going to take on four languages. Amazing. You just need to get the audio books. That's it. Uh, apparently it really works. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody I know learned to speak French in one year. Well, there you go. It should only take you four years to learn all of the above. <laughs> Better get going. That's it. So Victoria, what are you proudest of as a designer? Having had a success at Paris Fashion Week is such a big deal for me. You know, for three years we haven't had a show. We've been restructuring the business and the design team and the atelier. And to have that comeback moment in Paris, that's Roar a big, big, big deal. And that has been my dream for longer than I can ever remember. So that's my proudest moment so far. And the show was incredible. Really well. Thank you, thank you. And Edward, what are you proudest of in your career to date? 
I'm proud that I've been able to put out work over the years that's resonated with so many people. And I'm also really proud that I've contributed to an industry that's really inclusive and diverse. Is there anything you do different? I said, if I am lucky enough to come out of this pandemic and do a show, I want to really, really enjoy it. Because in the past, when I was doing the big shows, I was so stressed and you work so hard and you don't sleep and you drive yourself crazy about all the little details. I mean, I think people would be very, very surprised if they saw the amount of work and the attention to detail oh, yes. that goes into creating a they collection and a show. And that's what I did this time round. I fully, fully enjoyed it. So for me, moving forward, it's about working hard and being honest and true to myself, but really, really having fun and living in the moment, being present as well. What piece of advice would you give, Edward, to anybody that wanted to become a fashion editor today? I would say learn your craft, see how it's done. I feel like a lot of stylists start and editors start and they think they'll make it straight to the top. You need to really learn. And I always say, you know, you learn as much from the failures as mm -hmm. the successes. Mm -hmm. So really learn your craft. If you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? You know, I always struggled when I was when I was younger. I was never very popular. I was quite insecure. And I always had to work really, really hard. And so I would tell my younger self, everything's going to be OK. Just keep working hard, stay focused and have fun and enjoy yourself because it's going to be OK. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you for watching the second series of Vogue Visionaries. Don't forget to go to YouTube to watch all the episodes. Excellent. Thank you.